former stalker has been texting me. She's been dead for a year. Part 2 by Tiro1000 Hey everyone, but before I get started with the update, I just want to say that I've been blown away by the number of responses. While there are some things I need to address, I wanted to thank you all for the support. It's been a very stressful few days and every bit helps. First, a few of you have mentioned that this might not be Beth I have been speaking to. Some have mentioned the possibility of someone intentionally tricking me. Others have mentioned the possibility of something more malevolent, pretending to be Beth. One of you suggested that I should ask her something only she would know, which was a great idea. I asked her what show we were watching on Netflix the night we hooked up. Old wounds, I know, but I wanted to be sure. She immediately answered Daredevil, which was correct. I think she had a thing for superheroes. But anyways, uh, unless whoever it is had a quick access to her Netflix history for that small piece of trivia, I'm pretty sure it's Beth. A few of you so nicely pointed out that I'm kind of a piece of filth. I, I get it. I, I shouldn't have let her on. I shouldn't have kept coming back into her life. I shouldn't have taken advantage of her feelings. I shouldn't have hooked up with her. I get it. You think this isn't stuff I've told myself over and over again since she died? I fricked up. And, and now I'm paying the price. Don't need to rub it in. And lastly, quite a few of you gave suggestions on how to deal with this. Things like an exorcist or a house cleanse have come to my, my mind. Um, but some of you have suggested that I shouldn't do anything drastic until I know exactly what Beth is capable of. And I agree. Although I now have a somewhat better idea, I still don't know exactly what she can do. And I have to be careful what I discuss. For all I know, she's looking over my shoulder as I type this. I told her that I write to relax, and that mostly writing this to vent. She seems to be allowing this for now. So let's continue. After my little breakdown in my living room, I told Beth that I needed to sleep everything off and process. She agreed that we could talk more in the morning. I didn't feel ready to change in front of my spectral stalker, so I just lay down with all my clothes on. Sleep didn't come to me as easily as I'd hoped. I spent what felt like hours just laying there with my eyes closed. I may have been paranoia, but I think she was watching me the whole time. Eventually, for what it's worth, I did end up falling asleep. I wish I could say I slept soundly throughout the night and woke up refreshed. But I, I didn't. An old but well-known dream came to visit me. Beth was smiling at me as I put my hands around her neck and started to squeeze. I tried with every ounce of strength I could to pull my hands away. I screamed and screamed and screamed for myself to stop, but I wouldn't listen. And as I was strangling the life out of Beth, she kept smiling. Like she was just happy I was there. Even as her neck snapped, she just smiled at me. I was already sitting on the edge of my bed, crying as I realized it was just the same nightmare again. As it was calming down, I felt something brush against my cheek. Cold as ice and yet warm. I froze. I couldn't move. I, I couldn't breathe. A breeze came over my neck and a whisper into my ear. Eric. I was at the door in an instant, bolting out into the dark night. I didn't know if I could take it, so I needed to think. I didn't want to go back to sleep, so I walked. Nowhere in particular. Once I figured out my direction, I decided on the 24-hour convenience store close to my complex. After a block... My phone buzzed. Where are you going? I ignored it. I needed time to myself. After turning another corner, another message. Go back. Leave me alone. I told no one in particular. Two more blocks. Go. Back. Odd. She hadn't used caps lock before. I was so distracted by that thought that I didn't notice the two men approaching me. I was met with a hard blow to their gut, hunching me over. I gasped as my lungs struggled to suck air back in. 
The phone was pulled from my hand, and I looked up to see two barrels pointed at my face. Now, I've never had a gun pointed at me before, so I'd be lying if I said I handled it well. Please, I attempted to say. It came out as a whimper. Wallet, one of the men demanded. I pleaded again to no avail. Give me your freaking wallet, he answered, along with a click as he pulled back the hammer on his pistol. I started to hyperventilate, white clouds of vapor blowing from my mouth as I did. It was a cool night, but it shouldn't have been that cold. As I shakily reached for my pocket, the man's arm swayed to the left, the gun going off in his friend's face. The sound was so loud that I couldn't even hear the man yell in panic. I was frozen stiff, until I heard her voice in my ear. Run! I quickly snatched my phone off the ground just as the seeping puddle of blood touched it. I ran as fast as I could back to my apartment complex, stopping the entrance as my lungs gave out. I coughed and heaved to catch my breath, followed shortly by vomiting onto the asphalt. I checked behind me. No one. I pulled my phone up to call 911, but it was dead. Again. I checked again to make sure he didn't follow me, then weakly trudged over to my apartment. I locked the door as soon as I got inside. I collapsed onto my couch, the crash from the adrenaline high being enough to finally knock me out. I woke to the sound of a lock clicking. I looked up to, to see my front door open, the familiar woman stepping inside. Sarah. I smiled at her. I had just woken from a terrible and elaborate nightmare. And now Sarah was finally here to enjoy my day off with me. Hey, babe, I greeted her. I tried to call, but your phone went to straight to voicemail. Did you forget to plug it in? Must have, I said as I got up and gave her a kiss. She smiled, but pulled away from me. Eric, did you hurt yourself last night? What? I asked, nothing clicking into place. You've got blood on you. Alarmed, I stepped quickly into the bathroom to check myself in the mirror. Little droplets of blood were dried onto my face and shirt. It all came back at once. Beth. The text, the mugging, the feel of her icy hand on my cheek, her breath as she whispered my name. I turned and hugged the toilet as I vomited again. Sarah was quick to my side, patting me on the back. Oh, honey, I'll go get you some water. She left me to finish heaving into the toilet. I finally calmed my stomach and caught my breath, interrupted a moment later by a loud scream and the sound of shattered glass. I rushed into the kitchen to see Sarah with her hand clutched to her chest, her face pale. W what happened? I asked her with a shaky voice. I took a moment to gather myself. I waited in dreadful anticipation. I grabbed a glass out of the cabinet and there was a cockroach in it. I stepped out of the kitchen and sunk into the closest chair of my living room. She came in to join me, but I stopped her before she could sit down. I, I need you to go, I said as calmly as I could. She looked hurt. Eric, if this is about the glass, you can't be here right now, I snapped. Something to note. In the time that I have been dating Sarah, we've never really gotten into a screaming match. Odd, I know, but I guess we're still in that honeymoon phase of dating, where everything is perfect. So when I raised my voice, both of us winced in response. She looked at me with more concern than anything else. What's wrong, Eric? What was I supposed to tell her? Hey babe, remember that girl that offed herself because of me? Yeah, She's haunting me now, and is likely to kill you if you don't leave, so take a hike for your own safety. Bound to go well. So, instead, I dodged the question. Sarah, please, I'll call you later, but I need to be by myself. I'll spare you the back and forth of the past few minutes of her asking what was going on and me not answering her. She left shortly after in what may be seen as a upset mood. Can't say I blamed her, but it was for her own good. Now that she left, I had to deal with the elephant in the room. And the ghost. After plugging in and turning on the phone, 
I wasn't surprised to see a text waiting for me. Who the frick was that? Dump her or she dies. <laughs> Saw that coming. The conversation about Sarah went as well as you would expect. She acted like she didn't know, which I found odd. Anyways, you could imagine that she wasn't happy that I was involved with another woman. She was quick to make our breakup the first of her demands. I didn't have a reason to disagree. As much as I don't want to, and as much as I love her, Sarah is not safe with me right now. Maybe I can pick up the pieces once this is all over. But right now, it's for the best. The only argument I made was letting me do it my way. You have two days. At least this shows that I can reason with her when it comes to these demands. Maybe just a little. Regardless, this gives me time to figure out how to end things with Sarah without breaking her heart. Or even worse, making her suspicious. Either that, or find a way to fix this so I won't have to. Uh, the rest of Saturday was rather uneventful. I distanced myself from my cell phone for most of the day. Beth would, every once in a while, remind me that she was there by closing a door or knocking something over. More annoying than startling, after a while. Uh, we did talk a bit, though. I asked her if her saving my life the times she did would increase my chances of dying. You mean like Final Destination? I paused for a moment. Of course I meant like Final Destination. Those movies scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. The idea was scaring the crap out of me now. Yeah, I answered. Good idea, let's watch it. <sighs> Benched. Sleep wasn't much better Saturday night, although Beth made less of an effort to creep the crap out of me. Um, I still felt her watching me the whole time. I knew I couldn't keep doing this every night, so I thought of a plan. I set an alarm for the morning. I was getting ready, dressing in the nicest casual nice clothes I had when Beth texted me. Going somewhere? Church, I answered. Why? I sighed in annoyance. Here we go. <sighs> well, you kind of proved that there's a life after death, which means I need to start worrying about where I'll go when I die. Now, there could be some actual truth to everything. I continued to get ready, and a few minutes passed without a reply from Beth. Out of curiosity, I asked, Is there any truth to it? To what? God and heaven hell? Don't ask me that. Why not? I asked with intrigue. Just don't. I shrugged it off. <laughs> Last thing I wanted to do was push her. I left shortly after, heading over to St. Joseph's Church. The church hadn't really changed much since the last time I was there. My dad used to take us every Sunday, but I haven't gone in years. Father Frank was still there, which was good. He should be willing to help. Mass went as expected. I had to use the card with the changes that Pope Benedict implemented, but I gave up after a while and just sat quietly. Along with the other Catholics, I was tapping my foot impatiently after the hour mark. Father Frank didn't disappoint, ending the Mass not long after. I exited out the back of the church where Father Frank was wishing the parishioners a good day. Father Frank! I greeted him as I approached. He smiled politely, then recognized me a moment later. Eric! I wasn't expecting to see you here. He shook my hand with both of his. Will this be regular? Not sure yet, I answered honestly. Well, it was good to see you, he said as he moved to shake someone else's hand. I waited a few minutes for the last of the parishioners to come out. Father Frank noticed me waiting. Something I can help you with, Eric. Yeah, actually. Can we talk some more private? This isn't like the movies, Father Frank said from his desk. I can't just give you an exorcism. I'm really not even authorized to give them. We need a special priest. Dang. So that's it. I'm just crap out of luck. I winced at the piercing look he gave me over my swear. Sorry. The priest sighed. I'm not saying that, Eric. There are steps that we can take to help you. First, I can do a blessing on you. Then we can do a blessing of your home. If neither of those work... 
then it would be sufficient justification to call in a specialist. He put his hands up to stop my excitement. And don't think he'll just show up and perform an exorcism. A lot of investigating and preparation needs to go into it. It won't be an easy fix. I nodded to him with a deep breath. It's a uh, start at least. Okay then, uh, how do we do this? The blessing was simple. He anointed my head with uh, the water as he said a prayer. Alright, I said after he finished. What next? Well, next I can bless your home. He took a moment to think. I have three more masses today. Are you free tomorrow? I'd have to call out of work, but yes. We can set it for another day if... No. I cut off. He sighed and then apologized. Tomorrow, please. My phone chimed as soon as I got through the door. I took you so long. Now she was using punctuation. Perhaps she is learning? What do you mean? Church should have been over an hour ago. Where were you? She didn't know. I was pretty sure she saw the whole conversation. Was she trying to make me admit my plan? You didn't see me? Just answer the question. Only one way to find out. I was saying a rosary for my dad. That seemed to strike a chord with her. That was another sensitive subject of mine. And she knew it. All right, I'm sorry. That was the first time she's apologized to me since this started. It actually lifted the tension a bit. You haven't seen him, have you? No. Worth a shot. Today is the deadline. I haven't really thought of a way to break up with Sarah. I really don't want to, but I may have to. I'm going to wait and see how things work with Father Frank before I call her. Maybe I won't have to. Beth, I, I know you were reading this as I type, and I can tell that you were mad. You left me no choice. Pack your stuff and leave. We're done. Father Frank should be here in less than 20 minutes. I need to get ready. Wish me luck. Hey guys, Ninja Gamer here, and thank you so much Whew, for watching this video. Oh, one sec, little stretchy stretch here. If you did enjoy it, guys, please feel free to leave a like. It does help the channel innumerably and does help yeah, get the awesome on people's feeds as well as please consider subscribing as we are trying to hit a thousand subs by the end of the year and it would be a massive blessing for the lord if you guys did so of course read the million dollar question on screen right now in the description or in the pinned comment go check that out please teach you to become born again and enter the kingdom of god uh yeah of course uh i'll teach you to repent of your sins and trust in the good lord jesus christ on mental strength and then you will also teach you to read the Lord Bible daily pay to bad just people so it's great also, join the Discord link in the description. Love to have you guys there. Be awesome. Also, um, come check out the streams. Escape is 2 tonight, again. Um, yeah, we're trying to finish that sucker off. Uh, so that we can finally, 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 finally. I say finally. <laughs> I say finally. Uh, it's not finally. Um, I haven't been doing it that long, but I need to get this done. I need to get the other one done. And then I really want to play Astro's Playroom so badly. I played some doors today with some of my uh, family friends, and uh, I got to 98, and I died. Um, that was my fault. I, well, I, you know, room for improvement. Room for improvement. I, um, I did not get. I didn't know how it would be super dark in the greenhouse, like those last ten doors. It was nuts. Very nuts. I'm not going to keep you here for another 12 minutes, though. I am going to let you guys go. But come check out the streams if you guys are uh, needing something to watch tonight. It's only about 7 o'clock. I'm going to get this video out, and then I'm going to go play. I'm probably going to be playing Fortnite while I do Escapist because of some of the trophies that we're going to have to be dealing with. Uh, but other than that, mm, we're just... And then after that, we're just going to be doing... We just have... Essentially, it's three things. We have jobs. I guess four things, but we have the jobs that we still need to do for the specific prisons. We need to escape all specific prisons uh, in certain ways. And then, of course, um, we need to... 
uh, doing the multiplayer, and then the other stuff, which is combined as some of the other uh, miscellaneous trophies that I can't do on the specific prison that I'm currently on. So we will be doing another day of solitary confinement, and then uh, it's going to be three days of showers, pretty much, is uh, what it's going to be. And I'm just going to be showering whenever I can. Um, how many, how long would that even be, though? Oh, gosh. Uh, showers are going to be rough, man. Showers are going to be rough. I can't skip roll call. So that's the nice thing about solitary confinement. I don't have to do nothing. I just press two buttons every three minutes. I don't know. I love you guys. Please come by the streams. I'd love to have you. And I'll see you later. Do all those things. Pentros Christ. Love you guys. God bless. I'll talk to y'all very, very soon. But until next time, guys, this... Sorry about that. This is Ninja Gamer. Signing off.